shall we lift up our two hands and bless the name of the Lord for answered prayers tonight and bless him for those testimonies that we heard so stand in testimonies of the act of God in the lives of men give him thanks and praise and glory and honor And why don't you thank him ahead of time for what he has in stock for you tonight? Give him thanks and praise. Jesus gave thanks before the bread multiplied. Give him thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Now, it's important for us to know the place of spiritual understanding in our walk with God. He said, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. Exhort her, she shall promote thee. He said, she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Now, a crown of glory she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. That's how powerful understanding is. Our life will not be any more fruitful than how much of spiritual understanding we have of what we need to do. There are many honest hearts but at the same time ignorant. Are my people honest, sincere, full of integrity, but they perish for lack of knowledge? There is no substitute to spiritual understanding in maximizing our adventure in the kingdom. Proverbs 21 and verse 16 A man that wanders away from the path of understanding, he shall abide in the congregation of the dead. There won't be any difference between him and the unbeliever. For lack of adequate spiritual understanding. The soul went forth and sowed the seed. Some fell by the wayside, taken up by demons, eaten up by the devil. Some on the rock. There is no heart for God. Just let me have, let me have. Some among the thorns, you see, chaos. The of riches. I must get it by all means. So he goes to steal and all that. They catch him, jail him. And some fell on good ground. Now, even on good ground, they now yield results according to their varying levels of understanding. Lord, enhance my level of spiritual understanding tonight. One scripture can open up a great future. Lord, enlarge my cost of spiritual understanding tonight is one of the benefits in fasting. Lord, enlarge my cost of spiritual understanding tonight. That pastor said he was just hearing the testimonies of others and perhaps reading them, but there was nothing coming into him. And one day he said, No, enough is enough. That don't let your title deceive you. His understanding open. And then his heaven is open. Lord, enlarge my cost of spiritual understanding tonight. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Father, we are all waiting on you tonight as we stand and sit at the feet of Jesus. Open us up to next levels of understanding. Open each one of us up to next levels of spiritual understanding. Let this thing come true tonight in a way that we cannot get by ourselves. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please get seated. During my preparatory studies for the
take up of Covenant University. I came across one of those universities. I can't remember the name. And then the motto of that university is to thyself be true. To thyself be true. Many are not true to themselves. Many are not true to themselves. To thyself be true. Can I tell you that I was already preaching financial prosperity, but I didn't understand it. I read it, and you can always preach anything you read. So one day I said, look, I have not grabbed this thing. So help me. Show me now the secret of kingdom prosperity. And I went on a three-day fast, praying and searching. Come on, say praying and searching. Praying and searching. We need to understand that about fasting. It's not just praying because it provides a platform for outbreak of light. So pray and searching topical issues of interest to you. So I went with two books, one by Gloria Copeland, Understanding God's Will. I mean, God's Will is prosperity. And then The Laws of Prosperity by Kenneth Copeland. And my Bible, plus my heart. Oh Lord, show me. On the third day, the help was offered. Three days only. Somebody can go through his life for Satan like that forever. Three days only. You know, he said, although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, but he will not really move your teachers away from you. But your eyes will see your teachers. And behind what they are teaching, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way to go. Amen. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20 and 21. So it's so important. And what did I hear? The Lord said to me, My son David, my prosperity plan is not a promise. Hmm. The word promise was so strong in those days. The word covenant was very scarce. So it does not answer to prayer. We claim promises through prayers. It's not a promise. It has no respect for fasting. Because eh? when you are challenged, you use fasting weapon to deal with it. My prosperity plan is a covenant. And until your part is played, I am not committed. What? He was speaking to me behind Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Thou shalt remember the Lord your God for Jesus and give, give it the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. That is where unto thy fathers, I see this day, not mine. His covenant. Is avowed platform for empowering his people for wealth. What is this covenant? Now, it was in the midst of that search and praying and searching that I asked the same question on the spot. What is this covenant? Why the earth remained seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter shall not cease. And their night shall not cease. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. I mean, Genesis 8.22. How reliable is this covenant? I have? Because I love to ask questions I, I don't understand. <laughs> and he said in Jeremiah 33 and verse 20. Except my covenant be not with the day and with the night. And if I have not appointed that I should, I mean, and if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant with my servant David be broken. That will not have a son to reign on its own. And with the Levites, my priests, the ministers. So it covers every child of God. God's covenant. We have been redeemed as priests and kings to reign on the earth. If you can't stop the day and the night from extreme position, you can't stop my covenant 
any day, any time. At that point, I stood and screamed and yelled, Yay! I found it. Yes, I really found it. That prosperity is a demonstration of God's integrity to his plan to empower his people for wealth. So it's not something you look like you can do. No. It's doing what he says concerning his prosperity plan that entitles you and I to assess that realm. Well, so many things have happened after that time. So what's the covenant? It's a deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath. Very simple definition from Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 to 18. Let's go to 16 quick. For men validly swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Now therefore, God willing more abundantly to show unto the hearers of the promise the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. So that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie we might have a consul, his strong consolation, we have fled for refuge and lay hold on the hope set before us. A covenant is a deal enacted by God. I want to prosper you and these are the terms you must line up with to experience it. It's on this platform you are going to be empowered if you are interested. Remember, the Lord your God, which is it, give you the power to get wealth that he may establish to you his covenant. Now, if you watch the story of Noah, and Noah really had an altar of sacrifice and sacrificed every clean beast and every clean fowl upon the altar, and the Lord smelled the good savor in heaven, and God said, I will no longer cross mankind anymore. I will no longer cause the ground anymore for man's sake. I will no longer. The cross upon man, upon the ground, was averted in response to Noah's seed. And now God said, why the earth remains? As long as this earth is still in place, seed time will ever be required for anyone to experience harvest time. Seed time first. And then harvest follows. Now, how does that apply to giving? Now, watch. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8. Now, the word says, by this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and which he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Every man, according as he possesses in his heart, so let him give. So let him give. So giving is interpreted as sowing. Let him give. Not grudgingly, nor of necessity. God is not in need, for God loves a cheerful giver. And in response, God is able to make all grace abound, verse 8, towards you, so that you always having all sufficiency in all things. All sufficiency in all things. May abound to every good work. So it is sowing financial seed that entitles you and me to financial abundance with a responsibility to engage in good works to keep the flow. Can I hear your amen? amen? To keep the flow. No matter how sweet your menu, you still have to go to the toilet to discharge and empty your bowls. 
otherwise that sweet dish will soon be turned to poison amen we need to get we are blessed to be a blessing and we cannot be blessed beyond how committed we are to being a blessing When well, you find it difficult to go to the toilet, you have to go on medication to purge. Everything you eat does not belong to you. Some must go out to service the need of others. So the covenant is a lifelong platform. It is tough to walk when you stop walking it. The only way to keep taking in oxygen is to keep giving out your carbon, I mean, carbon dioxide. When you are tired of giving out your carbon dioxide, you can't take in any more oxygen. You have to breathe out to be entitled to breathe in. And giving is living. When you stop giving out your carbon dioxide, you stop taking in oxygen, and then you're out of existence. Completely out. Many are choking today financially because they won't let go. The pounded jam of last week is still there. The air bar is this there. The rice is still there. Now the eyes are coming out. I'm going to bless you and make your name great and thou shall be a blessing to keep the flow of my blessings in your life. So the covenant is not a once, once and for all stop, hit one testimony and flee. The Bible defines that covenant as the covenant of giving and receiving. Philippians chapter 4 verse 15. You Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. But ye only. For when, even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent unto my necessity once and again. Once and again. It's a once and again. Not a once and for us talk. Once and again. Once and again. It's a lifelong thing. Once and again. Not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that will abound to your account. Amen. Therefore, my God shall supply all your needs according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We need to have that once and again mentality to keep the flow of the blessings of God in our lives. Once and again mentality. Not once and for all. You all know that when you are tired of breathing, you are tired of living. How many understand that? I've been breathing all my life. I'm now about 25 years old. I think I should rest a bit. Then you are late to rest. The day you are tired of breathing, you are tired of living. May no one run dry of God's blessings anymore in their lives. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. We've been dealing with the subject fundamentals of kingdom wealth. The covenant of giving and receiving is the platform for assessing kingdom wealth. No one prospers in the kingdom without being a giver. That is the law of the land. 
If you are not a giver, you are not permitted to prosper. But here is the beauty of the covenant. Now listen to me. This is what gets everybody on board. The beauty of the covenant of wealth is that we can start from where we are. Because God's commandments are not grievous. <laughs> One widow gave a might. And Jesus said he gave the greatest. Because he cast all our living in there. We can start from where we are. And the blessings we keep showing up, boom, from one level to another, from one level to another, from one level to another. Giving guarantees the flow of his blessing. Just that many of us are in a hurry. Praise God. Many people are just in a hurry. Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. Many can wait. Their eyes are here. There's no way they can see anything here. The Lord said to Abraham, from the place where thou art. From where? Come along. From the place where thou art, look northwards. They are real. Southwards. Eastward, westward. For all the land where thou seest today, unto you will I give it. But start from where you are. These steps look so simple, but I'll be sweating without any progress if I must start from the third step. Now, the whole army of prayer warriors in this church, and there are many, you can be praying from now to tomorrow, I'll be sweating at one spot. And you will climb it without breathing hard if you will go step by step by step by step. It doesn't take time. But now if somebody's on the platform, I must get there. I must get there. Okay, go there. Go there. They said take the step. Never. Can't take the step. No. That's old fashioned. That's analog. Can't take the steps. No. And so he keeps sweating. Keep sweating. They are greeting, well done. It's not doing anything well. They are greeting. Praise God. It doesn't take time, it takes truth. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Though thy beginning be very small, yet thy later end shall, shall greatly increase. That's how God works. You have been faithful by very few things, now be thou, have thou authority over ten cities from few things to ten cities. That's why nobody's born an adult. The strongest muscular people today were born as babies. You are getting there. These fundamentals are crucial in determining the quality of your engagement in covenant practice. Amen. I, I, I got that revelation. It was very explosive. Yet, it had to take me through the steps. One step after another and after another and after another and after another. It hasn't stopped taking me because I won't stop doing it. 
There is nothing magical about our covenant work, and there's nothing mystical about it. It's all a matter of choice, and your level of understanding is what determines the strength of your choice. Glory to God. Somebody's breaking new grounds here. Amen. If you are the one, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. That's the beauty. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 17. The word says, um, Every man shall give as he is able. His commandments are not grievous, and it's not a need. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee, you give to the level of his blessings in your life. There are people here today, and I know you love me, and I know I love you, but if I give you 10 error, I may lose respect. Isn't it? And I said, hello, um, my son, uh, David, I just love you. I mean, I just love you. I mean, you know I love you. And I'm giving you this seed to bless you and your family. And after you left me, you opened the envelope. You saw 10 naira. <laughs> or you went back home to the village and you greeted your mother, you embraced her, you did everything, you now give her 5 naira. And here you are, you drove a jeep, you have security, you have everything. <laughs> You enter the room and tear it. <laughs> you give according to the blessing of the Lord your God upon you, or you lose respect. He said, Take what you are giving to your governor. Would they receive it from your hand? Carry your stuff away, my friend. You give according to the blessing of the Lord your God upon your life. These are fundamentals. He said, a son honors his father. A servant fears his master. If I be your father, where is my honor? If I be your master, where is my fear? You have the fatted calf among your flock, or you brought to me the blind and the lame. Take that your governor. Will he take it from your hand? My friend, carry your stuff away. We give according to the blessing of the Lord our God upon our lives. Otherwise, it will be rejected. Praise God. Not every offering given is accepted. No. Many are rejected and so they can't have return. If the earth rejects your seed, when will be your return? When is the harvest coming? So if I can't give you 10 naira by reason of my level of blessings and grace, you understand what I'm saying? How do you think I'll give that to God? And here we're done. We tell you, carry your rag from me and keep wearing it yourself. That's not my blessing on your life. But interestingly, the tithe of 10 naira is one naira. No argument. Praise God. Okay. And when a 10 naira tithe person, I mean, one naira tithe person, give one kubu for offering. Angels will be dancing. The what? After tight. Is he gave? One kubo. Well, so we give one kubo and go home with headache. Let's <laughs> just you bring your head. Well, <laughs> next time, carry your kubo away. <laughs> because that's not your level. Your level won't drop. Amen. So your level won't drop. Amen. Your level won't drop. Amen. Now, if I gave God a sacrifice of 50 naira in those days, there will be a party in heaven. Ah! My sons, my sons, sacrifice, 50 naira, my sons, angels dance, dance now, that's my sons. But if I call this sacrifice today, I say, God, this is my sacrifice. You know I love you. I've told everybody how much I love you. And you know too, I love you. So I gave you this 50 naira sacrifice. Let it be a sweet smelling sabbath. 
Now, why they will celebrating somebody says 15 naira at his level? He will reject this one with God forbid. Because he, he has blessed you beyond that level. Not that we're anything. We didn't bring anything from when we were born. It's all given to us. You know what I'm sharing with you? There are unacceptable seeds. May you not be part of giving that again. While we start from where we are, we keep growing as his blessings keep increasing in our lives. Can I hear your amen? Now, if your tithe was 20 naira, because of 20, 200 naira profit you made, now the profit now has gone to 2,000, and your tithe is still what? 20 naira. They remove it from tithe account to offering account. That means you are not a tither. The heaven can be opened. God has the accurate account of his blessings in your life. That's the way it works. Many put in their tithe, you they are not. The account in heaven shows offering only. <laughs> offering only. So the blessing of tithe is not near the place. You won't miss it anymore. You know why this is, is so relaxing? Is that God, your father, is never in need. Of his fullness have we all received. So it's not I what he gave us. Amen. But it's a covenant keeping God. And it's not respect of persons. And that's where a sense of responsibility must come in. A sense of covenant responsibility must come in. To keep us going. Amen. Now there is this story of a typical elephant. I've shared that several times. <laughs> this elephant is said to consume 140 pounds of straw. Not pounds sterling. Pounds. Kilograms. <laughs> oh, okay. is it kilograms? It's not 140, but I'm talking about weight. Not, not that he eats money like Nigerian uh, serpent. That's what. <laughs> it's the only country where... Serpents <laughs> swallow money. <laughs> ah, this place is full of drama. <laughs> say, Where is the money? He says, Serpent just entered. <laughs> okay. Now, and this elephant discharges a hundred pounds of manure per day. It's consuming the grass and is giving back to the ground what will grow the next grass. 140, 100. 140. If it discharges less than 100 and it goes down to 50, the elephant will fall down and die. Because of excess poison, toxin. But a cat, the food of a cat is like this. So the skitter will be like this. The one of a dog, if it's well fed, is like this. Amen. And the skitter will be like this. But the one of an elephant, after discharging, has to move. Because it's a motive. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Many covenant elephant sized financial giants will rise in this place. All by starting from where you are and growing in your covenant engagement as his blessings increase on your life. Your story is changing. In the school of kingdom prosperity, giving is the only way to go up and to stay up. Say with me, giving is the only way to go up and to stay up. Giving is the only way 
to go up and to stay up. Luke 9, 62. Whosoever puts his hand upon the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. No man having put his hand upon the plow or to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, Hebrews 10, 38, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So giving of just not, does not just give us access to a world of financial fortune. is the only way to keep us there. We have to keep doing it to stay there. The day you stop, the blessing stops. The day you turn your back, he turns his back. We have the story of J.C. Penning. A man taught on tithing by his mother in his growing up days and engaged with it when he began his business. And the business was growing and growing and the blessing was growing and growing. And he said, wait a minute, this tithe is getting too much. Now, the blessing is not getting too much. The blessing is not getting too much, but the tithe is getting too much. Poor devil. He wants to steal anything through our ignorance. So, as he was cutting down on tithing, the business was cutting down. Cutting down, cutting down, and finally went bankrupt. Finally went bankrupt. Oh God! I bind all the devils. Satan is laughing. I wasn't there. It's your choice. And then, it got light. Remember what brought you to where you are. Return. If you must be restored. So he crashed him to the ground before he discovered what was crashing him and went back to it at his zero level. Since we said the time was too much, now start from the beginning. Start from one dollar. Faithfully, committedly. Bit by bit, it began to come up. It began to come up. Once beaten, twice shy, he stayed there for life till he went home. Understand these fundamentals in prosperity. Many got some blessing. Boom! And fled. Wow! We got it. We got it. And it's finished. Can I tell you this? My own has never finished. Home. It has never come down. The one for the church has never finished. Home. It has never come down. Even last year under lockdown, our income was more than the previous year. Man, it has never come down. It has never. It is your going down that brings you down. What brought you up to release the up trust? The plane is dropping. You know, your up trust takes the plane off the ground. You have to keep it up. If you release it, you drop. You drop. This off and on won't make it. This off and on approach won't make it. It's one area you must be steadfast for it to keep working. You are not steadfast to stop working. Now watch your church is embarking on this mammoth project. There is no pressure, no pretense, no pressure, no heat, no temperature. My God. And it's not pretend, Lord, let's pretend a bit. Rural church building is going on. Taxi churches is going on. Faith Academy is going on. Everything is going on. Nothing good will stop in your life again. Come on, give the Lord praise. The secret is continuity. Come on, say with me, continuity. Let's round up. Demands for guarantee return. It's not the only way to go up. It's the only way to stay up.
given. Number two, we must continue to sow our seed in faith. Because whatever is not of faith is sin. Romans 14 and verse 22. Whatever is not of faith is sin. As our faith has it before, that is, when, to that is, before God happy seed commended not himself in that thing which he allowed. Verse 23. And in that doubt is damned if he eat because uh, he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And the wages of sin is dead. So the seed that is sown without faith is dead seed. Dead seed cannot grow. Dead seed cannot grow. But God said to you and me, my covenant will I not break. Now all that is going to go forth out of my lips. Every time you line up with whatever God commands in faith, it's integrity is committed to confirm. So we sow our seed in faith. I've never seen myself helping anyone but myself by the covenant that God has with his people. Faith is crucial. Faith is fundamental. For without faith, it's impossible for our sacrifice to please God. The good news is your story is ordained for a dramatic change this time. Amen. Certain things have come up between yesterday and today that should just reposition you forever in the covenant. You are not helping God. It's not changing God. It's not adding anything to God. It's not adding to the poor. It's adding only to you. Only to you. You don't mind the poor. God will send somebody else to do better than what you are doing. Glory to God. You don't give to the kingdom. In fact, the silver is his and the gold is his. He doesn't need you. The wine in your small pocket, he gave it to you. So you can't be eyeing what he gave you. Amen. You gave your toddler son uh, 10 naira, and then you call him, come, I want to talk to you. And he, he feels that maybe he wants to collect the money from me. You gave him out of your abundance. You don't need it. God won't need you if he has any problem, and he won't need me. He won't need that small church here. Oh. That, oh, come with my sons and daughters. I have a problem here. Can you help me? God has never sourced for help. We never. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness is the Lord. The world and all that we are there. Get excited as you engage because you are dealing with a covenant keeping God. As, the, as long as the earth remains, God's vow. To empower you and me for wealth is in place. As long as the day and the night are exchanging position, God's covenant remains in force. The Lord said to me, when you wake up in the morning and you see the sun, then know that my covenant is in force. You look up in the night, you see the moon, then know that my covenant is in force. So God's covenant remains in force till tomorrow. So keep engaging from where you are and keep growing with his blessings in your life. Something is coming forth in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Finally, a genuine love for God and the interest of his kingdom is a covenant guarantee for returns on our seed stone. Though I offer my body to be burned, I part with all my goods to feed the poor. But I have no charity. It profits me nothing. First Corinthians 13, 3. It profits me nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor so I can be known, I give my body to be born so I can be famous and popular. And I have no charity. It profits me nothing. So our giving must be love motivated at all times. Our giving must be God, I mean, 
love motivated at all times to guarantee returns on our seed stone. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. See how many sons he has harvested now. He has raised billions of sons unto glory. And thank God you are one of them. Thank God I'm one of them. For one seed of love, one seed of love has resulted into the harvest of the entire world. So let your heart beat for God be the motivation by your giving. Giving in promoting the kingdom. Giving in alleviating the suffering of the masses. Let it be your motivation. The return is guaranteed. But have a right motive. Praise God. Your return, you don't need to remind God about it. Have a right motive. Engage according to the rules of the game. Let the love of God be your motivation behind your seed sowing at all times. It's bound to produce. Just like the one seed of Jesus produce all of us today. Many have gone to glory. A number of us are still here. Amen. But one great morning, as the last trump shall sound, all the ones who are up, right there in the grave, we come up. Who are alive, we'll be here. And we all take off in the air. There's no space. There's no second flight. It's one flight. We all take off. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Well, we'll be singing. You'll be part of it. You must be part of it. Others are groaning and gnashing their teeth in fire. But you'll be glory. Glory, hallelujah. That's the way it works. My prayer is that no one among us will live as a pauper anymore. The price for your empowerment for wealth has been fully paid. It became poor that with his poverty might be made rich. So it's your redemptive heritage. Empowerment for wealth is our redemptive heritage. It's not an ambition. It's God's covenant with the redeemed. He died and obtained for us power and then riches. Power and riches. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessings. So it's not our ambition. It's our heritage. Lift up your right hand, everybody, and bless the name of the Lord. Do that in words, please. Why don't you stand on your feet and then begin to thank God for the light that has come your way. Strong light. We serve an all-knowing God. He knows where you are. He knows where I am. There's no point posting. He knows our level today. He knows how much of his blessing on our life today. Come and celebrate him. Thank him for showing you there's a once and again issue. It's not a once and for all engagement. Thank you for showing you that love motivated giving has guaranteed returns. God can't turn his back on his word. It's a covenant keeping God. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. You know what the word said? Acquaint now thyself with me and you'll be at peace. Receive, I pray thee, the law from my mouth and lay up my words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be beautiful. You shall put iniquity, crookedness away from your tabernacle. Then shall you lay up gold as dust. My God. And the gold of offer as the stones of the blue. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Job 22, verse 21 to 26. Awesome God. There are people here today that in your lifetime, that prophetic word will be practically fulfilled in your life. Yeah. Laying up 
gold as dust, commanding plenty of silver, and with heaven's defense around you against the wicked, who is gnashing their teeth. Uh, 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 we are together before. Uh, uh. He thought you were together. You are together with God. He's together with himself. God will demarcate. Between the faithful still what? And the one just passing time. You'll be on the positive side. Amen. You shall be on the positive side. Amen. Your family shall be on the positive side. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and get seated. Amen. Very quickly, please. You are here this evening. Um, you want to surrender your life to Christ and be born again. Have your sins forgiven. Become a new creature. Secure a glorious destiny. And make eternity at the end of your journey. Wherever you are, it's for free. All you need is repent of your sins, accept him as your Lord and Savior, and you are saved. So wherever you are, both here at the Youth Chapel, in Canaan Land, and all of our viewing centers across Lagos and Northam, please stand to your feet. You want me to pray with you to be saved? Stand to your feet. You want to turn your life over to Jesus tonight? Please stand to your feet. You want to be born again and become a child of God? Please stand to your feet. It's your chance for a change of story. God bless you. Wherever you are, stand up to your feet. And I'll be praying for you in a moment. Amen. Except a man is born again. You cannot see. What you cannot see, you cannot taste. As far as your eyes can see, to you will I give it. If you can't see it, you can't get it. So if you are here, you want to surrender your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. And I'll be praying with you tonight. And Jesus will save your soul. You have a brand new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Secondly, there are people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to Christ. Don't assume it. Do it. Do it. You know the thing is not happening. You can't, you can't touch it. You're only hearing new creation. It's not, it's, not, it's not manifesting in your life. And you want it. Maybe you are once there, but you know you are no longer there. You want to reconnect back to your Heavenly Father. Wherever you are tonight, stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. You want to dedicate your life to Christ, just stand to your feet. You want to dedicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. And I'll be praying with you in a moment. And Jesus will restore you in grand styles. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Everyone standing up for either of the these two calls, please make your way quickly to the front. And I'll be praying for you right now. Make your way quickly to the front. And I'll be praying for you right now. Make your way quickly to the front. Anybody who still wants to stand up, you can join us quickly. You can join us now. And Jesus will save and restore your life back to color and beauty. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is good. Now, for everyone standing in front of us, across the various zona centers, pray this simple prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, with your head bowed and your right hand lifted, say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you tonight. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again, that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Now be blessed in the name of Jesus. Everyone under this prayer cover today, I and get the blood of Jesus for your covering. Amen. Be covered by the blood of Jesus Amen. against all satanic assaults. And grace to live the overcomer's life is released upon your life. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Father. Grace to run this race to the end and make heaven at the end of your journey. Receive it right now. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please walk this way. Amen. Shall we all rise, please? 
Amen. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise unto thyself. If you scorn, only you will be it. No scorners here. May each one's understanding remain open to these realities of the kingdom. Amen. 